Okay, hi guys. So this is the second part of the video that uh, was uh, uploaded yesterday. So we are doing virtual drug screening for tutorial on virtual drug screening for the COVID-19. So I'll just recap a little bit on what was done on the first part so that there is a continuity. So yesterday we had seen how to so the nucleotide sequence or the genome of uh, the COVID-19 virus is already sequenced okay and it is deposited in the gen bank so we had seen how to take the nucleotide sequence and produce the corresponding amino acid sequence or produce the corresponding proteins that will be encoded by this nucleotide sequence so we had used some external tools and we had seen how that this could be done and these are going to be our drug targets the enzymes produced by this uh, by the nucleotide sequence of this virus is going to be our drug target because these enzymes help the replication of the virus okay so this is already done we said that this is already done for one particular sample uh, sample case taken from china of the covid 19 and we, these are the uh, proteins or the enzymes that we have uh, that the uh, that the genome encodes uh, that is for genome encodes and is produced by the uh, the, these are the uh, the enzymes of the pro enzymes of the protein the genome encodes and the, this is, this is listed down here the, we had seen that till this point yesterday right so so what we said was we are going to do was this we are going to take the the enzymes that are helpful in the replication of the virus they are going to be a drug target so it's going to inhibit the function of these enzymes by some small drug molecules so we are going to inhibit these enzymes okay so those are going to be our antiviral drugs right so this is this is what we had seen last time so okay so this is a paper that we had seen yesterday this is a review paper so we said how so we said that we will look at so just like how here we had uh, these new uh, protein amino acid sequence or these new proteins we recognize their function by comparing them to similar proteins of known function right this uh, amino acid sequence so similarly we will go to here uh, these are the drugs used for the SARS infection that emerged 10 years back in southern Asian country okay so these are the uh, drugs that were used so this is the review paper this was published in 2014 okay so these are the drugs used for the general family of SARS infections and now the new virus is a since this family of viruses mutate very quickly so the new viruses genome sequ uh, genome or the nucleotide sequence might be, be different from the uh, previous ones so therefore this uh, new for this new one we will start our drug search from the known ones okay from the known uh, ones that were used previously so what we will do is we will take We will take one of the, so what, so this drug they are saying, this is, so these are the drugs they are saying that inhibit these enzymes. So one drug we will say and as I said, we will look for structurally similar compounds. So how do we look for structurally similar compounds? We will put them in this, this uh, database is called the PubChem database. So you all your chemical compounds all drug molecules you can find here the structure you can find here the IUPAC name you can find here and structurally similar compounds also you can find so what is how do we theoretically computationally screen for uh, our small drug molecules that could inhibit these enzymes we check whether they have any binding affinity our small drug molecule has any binding affinity towards this enzyme such that it produces a conformational change in the enzyme Therefore, when the structure uh, or the conformation changes, the function, we expect the function to change and if the function of the enzyme is to aid the replication of the virus, then we expect that to change. So that is what we are going to see. So we will be using some molecular docking tools like Swiss dock, auto dock, okay, uh, to check this binding affinity. Before that, we have to pick up, we have to build a library of ligands that is a library of small drug molecules for which we can check this okay so as i said the starting point will be the uh, uh, we will look at uh, drugs that are used for SARS 
okay, because it comes from the same family. So these are the drugs that are used for SARS. So I'll take some of these drugs and find to build our library of ligands that will check the binding affinity. I'll go to the PubChem database. I'll put this input this drug, okay. So valinomycin, and I will look for structurally similar struct similar structural search, okay, similar structural search. So I look for drugs that are uh, compounds that are structurally similar to this compound. Okay, so by that by that I can build my library of ligands. So this is this is our main this is our compound, and I can take some. So this is again here you can see uh, this is a, a structurally similar compound, slightly different in structure. Okay. So you can take compounds like this that are structurally similar, build your family library of ligands before you do the docking procedure. Okay. So more and more structures will be there okay, that are similar but are different. So we can check which will have, which will be better in this case. Okay. So which will be better this. So this is how you build the library of ligands. So this is how you build your library of ligands. So I will take one compound and show you how to. So you go into. So let me go into this compound. So you just download the file. Okay, it will be in any of the chemical formats. So you just download it. So. I will download it in this format. Okay, and to to do the docking procedure, you might have to you might have to use uh, you have might have to convert the uh, this chemical format into the chemical format that the your docking software requires. So for which I will use a software called Open Babel. It is freely freely available online. Okay, you can just download it and install it. So once you get that software, you can uh, download, uh, convert your your structure to the required chemical format. Okay, required chemical format. So let this uh, open. So meanwhile, so one side for doing the docking procedure, you need the library of ligands. The other side of it, you need the drug target or what protein you are going to take. So in, this, in our case we are going to pick out enzymes that help in the replication of the virus. So we, so here we had seen what we had seen yesterday how to pick those right. So, uh, so here they are saying the papin like protein is helps in the is necessary for viral replication. So let me pick out so this is uh, let me pick out the this is we will first take check and see uh, this as a drug target okay so i'll take the fasta sequence so i have the fasta sequence here so now this has to be the structure has to be created so I will put it in Swiss model ok. So this Swiss modeling software also we had seen yesterday. So I'll put it in Swiss model and I will ask the uh, software to model it for me. Right. So meanwhile, let this uh, modeling happen. Okay. So we'll continue our discussion or our tutorial. So on one side, as I said, you have to prepare your library of ligands, and the other side, you have to prepare your drug target, which is a protein. And in this uh, in this case, we are taking out enzymes that help in the replication of the virus. We're seeing whether our drugs can inhibit this enzyme, the function of this enzyme. Now. 
right so this is as i said this is the open babel software so you can convert your structure to the required chemical format uh, required by uh, the autodoc software that you choose to use okay uh, sorry the docking software that you choose to use so one docking software as i already yesterday mentioned was the swiss dock software okay so here it's an online tool you can you have to prepare the you have to uh, this is going to be your uh, drug target or your protein okay so you have to input the uh, protein in the pdb format it's called the protein data bank format okay so when just as we had seen here okay whether we check whether our structure is modeled okay it's getting modeled okay i will go to something i ran previously okay so this is how you will get once you model the structure you will see something like this okay right. so once the swiss modeling uh, is complete you will get something like this you have to download this okay so this is you will get a zip file you just have to open the zip file and there will be a pdb file so there will be a pdb file you just have to download it so this here you can see you have to go into right so here you can see a pdb file model.pdb so this is the format required and you just have to input it here okay so this is where we were discussing about swiss doc now my computer is uh, slowing down because i am running a lot of tabs and i am running the uh, screen capture software so just slowing down it okay so anyway right so i've got it so here you have to input the uh, just upload the pdb file that we got from there okay and here you have to upload the ligand file and this ligand file has to be uploaded in the mol2 format okay in the mol2 format so here you can perform the required change in format so here the format we had downloaded was in xml format right so here we had the xml format so the format required is right so this is xml the format required is mol2 so just press convert you just have to load the file here and press convert and wherever you want the output to display the folder you will get the file so this for software is called open babel software okay so i'll just close this right so once you do this you will actually so you just have to submit the file and uh, put your email address you will start docking you will get your uh, result okay you will get your result and remember in the pdb file okay you should not have heter hetero atoms okay you should have only one chain okay the uh, pdb file you choose to have let me show you so, right so it should look like so you should it should end the chain should end so you should have only one chain okay i here i have two chains this is the b chain so you have only one chain uh, the longest chain of the protein okay a or b or c whichever it is and it should end with the uh, terminal atom okay so that's how it goes okay so i don't have hetero atoms when you are doing dog okay right so once you do that you will uh, submit uh, you say start docking okay and you will get your result so for all your library of ligands that you take for one single target that you have taken right this is the drug target your enzyme you upload all the uh, ligands okay if you are taking uh, 10 ligands libraries then just upload you will and then you submit it in half an hour or so you will get the result okay so once you get the results what should you check for okay what should you check for that is what i am going to show next okay so what you should check for is so these results actually can be again uh, there are different visualization softwares okay like pymol uh, uc uscf okay uh, there is a software called uscf uh, chimera so all these kind of softwares are there to visualize your results okay but 
what uh, what is the factor that we are going to uh, watch out for that is called the binding energy okay the binding energy so the binding energy has to be a minimum that is so that is when a stable complex is formed so you are taking your protein you are taking your protein and you are taking your small drug molecule okay when uh, when the if there is a binding so uh, you must know the concept of potential energy first okay in physics you would have learned potential energy if i have a well like this right if i have a well like this if i have a inverted uh, let's say i have an inverted uh, well like this if i put a ball here the ball will come down to the lowest point right so the lowest potential energy is favored right so therefore similarly here the lowest energy here is favored okay so the compound which gives you the lowest binding energy is your compound which will give you a stable complex with the protein okay the compound it will give you the most stable complex uh, most stable uh, complex with the protein it will form a stable complex with the protein therefore it is most likely to you have to check after that you have to go to to your experimental trials to uh, confirm your theoretical prediction okay that that uh, this theory uh, the theoretical computational prediction part ends but what we have done here is a blind dog okay what you do here is a blind dog that means you don't know in a protein the protein will have active site it doesn't bind to the small drug molecule cannot bind to any part of the protein it binds to some active site so he, uh, here we have done a blind dog so the accuracy might not be there in a blind dog okay so what you do is uh, you can go to software such as autodoc so here uh, i'm i'm not going to do the autodoc procedure fully uh, there are uh, brilliant tutorials online to learn the procedure of autodoc and it's a free software for academic use okay so you can download the software and do the docking procedure here you can choose your uh there is a there will be a grid that comes so you can see this grid in this when this grid comes you can choose you can refine your uh, region such that this docking happens only within the, some region that you specify within which the active site is present so you'll get more ac accurate results okay so here you can perform the blind dock and when you visualize your results you can identify where the active sites are and then you can uh refine your docking using this auto dock because here the grids are available where the docking region can be confined and more accurate results can be obtained okay so the auto dock procedure uh, how to install it to and how to run it all these procedures are available online okay so the auto dock result also is going to look something like this so you will have your binding energy so if the lowest binding energy is, is what we will be looking at so for all the ligands that you've taken you have to compare uh, which for which ligand you get the lowest binding energy okay you get the lowest binding energy so uh, as i said autodoc we have just discussed how it will give you a more uh, refined accurate result so there is another software these uh, softwares are called molecular dynamics software okay so these softwares also give you more refined results so we'll see how to use that okay not going to do the detailed procedure it's very the tutorials again are available online i'm just going to tell you what they are and how to why we use them okay and how we go about it so this is the protein ligand uh, tutorial for gromax molecular dynamics software so the gromax software again it's uh, it's use it it can be downloaded online okay it's uh, free for academic use and lot of scientific uh, research publications use them okay so it's standardly accepted software in the scientific community okay so uh, we'll go to so what do we do with them okay so one thing is uh, we will first see so uh, we'll discuss some of the results that can be obtained and how they are useful for the studies that we are doing so what for what we are doing how the results that we obtain using this uh, molecular dynamics can be actually useful to us first so these are the uh, detailed tutorial that is given so these are the steps that you should follow i'll go to the step where 
the result that we get is of significance to us okay so you have to do all this to you have to do all this procedure so i'll go to the point where we are talking about the energy minimization right, right. so we've got to the point uh, where we are talking about the energy minimization so what is this okay so this energy minimization is a useful tool in two ways first in in determining the structure of the protein itself okay so supposing in our swiss model we were discussing the swiss model right let me go to the swiss model right so so this is where i downloaded the pdb file from the swiss model that was a pain so, so here you can see that this was the uh, the highlighted part is the uh, portion where R sequence has coincides with some known protein sequence. Okay, it coincides with some known protein sequence. But not always will this coverage be uh, so much like this. Sometimes the coverage will be so low, such that uh, this is the coverage highlight. Okay, so here the coverage is very low that it matches with some uh, known protein sequences. Our our protein matches with some known protein case. The coverage is very low. Here the coverage is high. Okay, here the coverage is high. Here the coverage is very low. Okay, in that case, if you model using these kind of modeling software, uh, this is called homology modeling. Okay, this that is the similarity using the similarity they are modeling. Okay, in that case, the modeling won't be very accurate. Only if the coverage is so much high like this, then modeling will be good okay but if the coverage is very low like this as it is highlighted here then the modeling might not be very accurate therefore we will have to first do find out the structure of the protein itself we have to use this uh, molecular dynamics what they will do is it's just you are just giving the pdb file okay whatever pdb file you get from this software with this limited coverage you give to this molecular dynamics okay what it will do is it will obtain the structure by a process of energy minimization okay that is it is moving the atoms it is moving the atoms that is the coordinates are changing such that it the coordinates corresponding to the lowest energy okay is the structure that is obtained okay so as i said any system any system favors the lowest possible energy it can uh, it can be at okay so if you have if you have a, uh, you would have seen the potential energy uh, study when you were doing your 11th and 12th you would have had an inverted uh, bowl like this right and in which if you keep a ball like this the ball will roll and come down to the bottom of the bowl right you if you keep a bowl like this right if you keep a bowl like this if you keep a ball here the ball will roll and come down to the bottom right that means at that point the the potential energy is minimum because the height is the uh, minimum and the potential energy is minimum the gravitational potential energy is minimum in that case so similarly here uh, for obtaining the structure also we follow such a process we move the atoms such a way that uh, it can uh, we keep moving the coordinates of the atoms that is the position of the atoms such a way the software does that such a way to minimize the energy of the total system in this case in this case it is our protein and the once you minimize the energy the structure corresponding to the minimized energy is your correct structure so that case so here you can find out the correct protein structure okay that is one thing that we can do next for our docking what we can do is we can minimize the energy of the protein first and then minimize the energy of the protein and the ligand complex okay whatever complex that you obtain from here okay you would have obtained from autodoc or from here okay here from autodoc you will obtain a complex from here also you can download the complex whatever complex that you obtain from here you min run minimization for the complex and for the protein okay if the minimized energy of the complex is lower than that of the protein then what you can say is the complex formation is favored okay because if you put both of them together what happens 
the energy becomes lower that means that is a more favored uh, that is a more favored position or that that system is more favored than this system right the than the protein existing alone the protein bound with the ligand is more favored because the energy is a minimum there so with this also you can find out whether they have any binding affinity okay uh, this is the usefulness of energy minimization next what else can we do uh, so you do all this process that is given here we can obtain some other interesting results also okay so in the analysis section we'll discuss that right so okay i don't think Okay, they have done RMS here, but I might have to show you, right, just hold on. So we can basically find some structural parameters that can, uh, that will tell us whether our complex is uh, stable or not. Okay, so we will find out some structural parameters that will tell us whether our complex is stable or not. What are those parameters? One is RMST, the stabilization of the RMST. Okay, the root mean square deviation. So, <clears throat> I'll show you how to, how we, so the detailed tutorial on how to get these values, how to run the software is given here. I'll tell you how it is useful, from the result I'll tell you how it is useful for us. Right, so here you can see that, uh, right, so this is the analysis part. So once you run the molecular dynamics for the protein and then you have to run the molecular dynamics for the complex, okay. And then you calculate the RMST, the procedure is given here. Now, what you can do is you can observe the stabilization of the RMST of the protein and the complex, okay. Let's say this red graph. Uh, let's say this red graph is the protein and this black graph is the complex. Let's say this black graph is the complex and this is the protein. Now, if this black graph stabilizes much quicker than the uh, protein, the red graph, then we can say our complex is stable. Okay. So, here again, there we say oh, energetically that complex formation will be stable when the the energy, the minimized energy of the complex is lower than the minimized energy of the protein. Here, if this complex, the structure of the complex stabilizes, the RMSD of the complex stabilizes quicker than that of the protein, then we can also say that structurally also the complex is more uh, structurally stable than the protein. Therefore, the complex will be preferred, uh, the formation of the complex will be pre preferred over, over the uh, protein staying alone, right. So, that these things we can uh, say theoretically, computationally, these things we can say. So, with this you will get some drug leads, okay, from the library, ligand libraries that you build uh, on the target, you, uh, uh, drug target that you have chosen, you will get some drug leads, okay, the, some drug leads and this further has to be tested experimentally. So, one way of testing it is, is testing it on uh, cell model. So, that is called in vitro testing. So, if you have positive results on in vitro testing, that is the toxicity should be low, that is called cytotoxicity and at that toxicity, at that level of concentration where the toxicity is low, it can be administered, you have to check your uh, level, uh, the inhibition that it can produce because you cannot give any concentration, you can only give biologically safe concentration. So, at that level of concentration, if the compound that for which you got the lead can produce an inhibition even experimentally, then that in vitro testing gets over at that stage. Then you can go, then you have to go to in vivo. That means you have to do clinical trials and then goes to product development. So, uh, even if you, so this in vitro part requires a lot of uh, biotech uh, level of uh, 
facility okay but these computational work people at home with a system and a laptop and a good computer can do it okay so if you choose a work i think it will take 2 to 3 months to complete it okay so after you complete that work you have to write a paper right uh, and writing a paper i think um, you can you have to write a paper a scientific paper and the journals that will accept these kind of papers are uh, computational based uh, uh, journals okay computational chemistry computational biology uh, bioinformatics journals such as that okay by good publishers check for something like scopus index uh, 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 publishers a uh, journals so that your work is published in a standard sort of uh, place where you will have an audience a scientific audience look at your work and and take your work to the next stage uh, which is in vitro in vivo testing okay and how to write a scientific paper uh, th definitely there are lot of uh, tutorials out there to help you out let us give you a probably give you a brief uh, outline okay uh, so a scientific paper best way obviously you have to read some uh, look at some tutorials uh, read some pdfs on research methodology but uh, a quick way to do it is uh, look at papers that were previously published similar sort of work that was previously published in uh, computational biology computational chemistry bioinformatics similar work this is called in silico modeling that is computer modeling similar sort of work that was published okay so uh, a uh, scientific general structure of a uh, scientific paper so this is a review paper this is not a specialized paper so i don't think this uh, this structure uh, will be different review paper structure but a specialized paper is going to con consist of basically uh, the introduction okay so in the introduction you will argue for why you are doing this work why why this uh, work is still is relevant because it has not been done and on based on what other uh, papers that have already been published you are taking a step forward you are there, there is an increment uh, it's an incremental work you argue for an incremental work saying these the uh, such such studies have been published so far this study will uh, will produce results that, uh, uh, that that are novel in a way that it has not been done so far that will be your introduction and then you do, do your materials and methods that you are they have to Oh, give the theory of the software that you are using, little bit of theory and the methodology, how you use it, and the settings of the software that you are using, all those things. And then you have your results and discussion uh, section. That that is all the results that you have. You have to first give your results, then you have to discuss it. Okay, and then you conclude the paper. Okay, so the best way to do it is take up a paper that is published in a similar sort of work that is published that is published in. Uh, 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 journal and then you know, if you look at it four or five papers you read you will uh, be able to come to terms with it okay so thank you for watching okay do subscribe to the channel and do let your friends know that there is something like this around